Jeff Weiss with you again. Uh, we're into the second uh, part of Unit 2, Flowers, Fruits, and Seeds. I broke this material up into three uh, 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 PowerPoints and three lectures uh, to give you a chance to uh, take a break and stretch. Uh, this material is a little bit dry, uh, important, but um, it, it's pretty dense. There's a lot of uh, terms flying around and so I urge you to uh, spend some time with it uh, and uh, uh, start to think about what's important. Uh, one thing to note is that you do have an assignment or you will have an assignment to uh, uh, dissect some of these uh, uh, organs so when we're getting into flowers, fruits, and seeds uh, you will have a, uh, a, an assignment to uh, dissect, draw, and photograph uh, or send me uh, your drawings. So uh, heads up on this one. Uh, good, good time to pay attention and uh, start thinking about uh, the assignment for the week. So this first, uh, um, well, the, the theme of the um, organs that are covered in these uh, uh, next two uh, lectures are uh, reproductive and non-reproductive plant parts. So all of the um, plant parts that are covered in this week have to do with uh, rep sexual reproduction of the plant. Uh, and uh, this picture happens to be of a lily. Uh, this is a, a very common uh, uh, plant uh, easily acquired uh, year-round at grocery stores and it's a uh, classic flower. It uh, has all of the flower parts uh, visible in, 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 a, in a form where they're pretty easy to identify and dissect. So um, a mature lily is a pretty good flower to uh, consider for your uh, dissection assignment. So this week, uh, or for this part of the lesson, the key terms and concepts are flower parts, uh, flower shapes, inflorescence, which is another term for a, um, a, a compound flower, a, that is a flower uh, head that has more than one, uh, one individual flower on it, and fruit and seed development. So the critical parts of a flower are the uh, sepals, uh, also known uh, collectively as the calyx. Those are mo modified leaves that uh, uh, protect a de developing flower. Uh, petals are the showy, usually showy flower parts uh, that, that attract pollinators. Uh, collectively, all of the pe petals of a flower are known as the corolla. Uh, there's the stamen which is the male parts of the flower made up of uh, anthers and filaments, and the pistil, uh, which includes the stigma, style, ovary, and ovule. Those are the female parts of a plant, of a flower. Uh, flower shapes vary dramatically, as we all know. Um, in evolutionary terms, uh, Actinomorphy has been replaced by zygomorphy. Uh, flower, actinomorphic flowers uh, radiate from a central point. Uh, others uh, have a zygomorphic shape, uh, but they're still, as in the case of this pansy, still, uh, if you cut them uh, in half up and down, they're still uh, symmetrical. So here's the terms uh, that relate to flower shape. Um, the additional terms would be apopeletus, pellet. <laughs> uh, good thing we, this is an online course. You don't have to say these out loud unless you choose to. Apopetalus. Uh, the corolla is made up of separate petals curved or cupped around the ovary. Or sympopetalus, uh, where the corolla is fused into a tube. Uh, an example of a fused uh, corolla might be a uh, a uh, uh, hmm, I'm drawing a blank uh, a, f a bellflower a bellflower is a good example of a uh, uh, of a uh, plant with a pollen tube 
and uh, you can probably you've probably thought of others while I was stumbling around here. Uh, now, other flowers have multiple flowers on a single stem, and those are called inflorescences. And here's some uh, stylized shapes of different inflorescences. Uh, a spike uh, is one. Uh, gladiolus is uh, an example of, uh, of a uh, plant that occurs on a spike. A raceme has uh, stems coming out uh, uh, and the uh, stems are called pedicels uh, and at the end of each of those pedicels there's a flower. Um, a simple uh, umbel and a compound umbel uh, these are uh, examples of plants in the parsley family. Uh, the wildflower uh, Queen Anne's Lace has uh, one example of this and uh, uh, parsley is another. Um, and then finally a quorum uh, looks somewhat like a, an umbel uh, but has the, uh, uh, the flower uh, stems uh, coming out uh, from a uh, from alternate places on the on the stem. So these are just uh, five examples of many different uh, types of inflorescences. Uh, but you may want to um, uh, notice and try to recall these for future purposes. So here's a list of others. Uh, catkin. Uh, you can uh, recognize that uh, if you think about the flowers uh, hanging from a birch tree. A spadex, uh, that's uh, one of my favorite plants, uh, wild plants, is uh, uh, Jack in the Pulpit, and that's a good example of a uh, spadex type of uh, inflorescence. So now moving along to uh, what happens uh, to the flower as it uh, develops into first a fruit and then seeds uh, is that uh, the um, ovary of the plant contains uh, a number of ovules and, and the ovules are, uh, the ovary is what forms the fruit and the ovule is where the uh, seeds form within that ovary. So um, development occurs from uh, flower to fruit to seed and uh, these label diagrams uh, will give you another opportunity to uh, learn important terms, uh, some of which we'll uh, come back to uh, in a few slides. So everyone is familiar that there's uh, um, fleshy fruits and uh, uh, dry fruits such as nuts and uh, first to talk about fleshy fruits uh, there's three types here that I uh, out of many uh, others um, that I'm going to talk about for a moment and uh, first is a droop um, which is uh, uh, characterized by a um, uh, stone fruit each uh, carpel has one seed and that uh, seed is hard and stony and strongly attached uh, uh, to the fruit. Uh, a berry, which we're all familiar with, uh, but uh, uh, did you know that melons and uh, tomatoes are also berries? Um, and then poems are pitted fruit with um, The fleshy uh, portion uh, surrounds a uh, receptacle with the seeds inside and uh, apples and pears are examples of poems. And then there's dry fruits, a variety of these and uh, you can uh, distinguish between uh, dry fruits by a number of uh, characteristics. Uh, whether they uh, split readily, uh, whether they have a hard wall that completely surrounds the seed, uh, whether they're uh, from a, a single flower with many uh, carpels, with, in other words, a cluster of tiny fruitlets, uh, 
strawberries and raspberries are examples of aggregate fruits or multiple fruits where a cluster of flowers uh, uh, form and stay together as they develop into one fruit. An example of this would be a fig. So other categories, uh, temperate versus tropical, uh, that's the uh, tolerance to cold or cool or cold temperatures. Um, fruiting trees, uh, anything produced in a tree form, apple or mango, are examples of uh, fruit trees. Uh, small fruits, perennials, maybe uh, herbs, or vines, or woody plants. Uh, but not quite trees, and some examples of this would include strawberries or kiwi fruit, blackberries or grapes. And bramble uh, fruit, they have uh, canes or br brambling stems that require support to hold them up. Uh, blackberries and raspberries are examples of um, those fruits. And we will have a unit later on in the course about fruit production, so I'm setting the stage uh, with this discussion for uh, an important uh, horticultural uh, discipline, which is uh, uh, fruit production. So now we're moving on to seeds. Um, I think in the first week's assignment we talked about uh, gymnosperms, uh, the conifers versus angiosperms, the flowering plants. Well, uh, the seeds are quite different between the two. Uh, gymnosperms are um, so-called naked seeds, um, whereas angiosperms, uh, for the most part, produce seeds through flowers uh, that are contained in an ovary, such as I just showed you. Uh, naked seeds are produced in cones, uh, and uh, that's where the word conifer comes from to describe uh, many of the common evergreen um, trees and shrubs that grow in our area. And finally, our cytogams, uh, excuse me, cryptogams, uh, non-seed-bearing uh, plants that typically form through spores. These are characterized by um, more primitive plants uh, such as ferns and liverworts. But most of what we are going to be concerned about in horticulture are the uh, uh, flowering uh, plants that produce seeds, whether they're uh, gymnosperm naked seeds or angiosperm uh, uh, seeds produced through an ovary. The structure of uh, a seed, some of the key uh, seed parts uh, that uh, you will be looking for when you do your dissection uh, exercise includes the uh, seed coat, the endosperm. Seed coat is the outer coating of the, of the seed. The endosperm is the uh, material that's provided for nutrition. Uh, the cotyledon is the embryo, embryonic leaf of a, um, of a seed. In the case of a monocot, there is only one cotyledon that will emerge. In the case of dicots, you'll see two of these cotyledons. And then finally, the embryo is the, uh, the fertilized uh, cells uh, formed out of uh, sexual reproduction that uh, go on to become the uh, various uh, parts of, of the plant. So here's another uh, cut of seed structure. This one is for a dicot. And again, the uh, seed coat, uh, the embryo is a little more complex in a dicot and consists uh, of a hypocotyl, which uh, is the, uh, uh, the, the, the heart of the plant. The radical is the um, part that will uh, develop into the roots and the cotyledons uh, become the stem and leaves of the plant. The 
So um, we are going to um, have a dissection uh, assignment, and I'll let you uh, decide for yourself if you want to uh, um, use an apple or um, an, another fruit and uh, find and label these anatomical structures. And uh, that's it for the second uh, lecture for Unit 2, and I'll be um, joining you again for the third and final part.